Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So WorldCoin which is backed by Sam Altman, they had their event recently. And in that event, they had some latest releases. So we'll be covering all of that today in this video. So if you're not aware about WorldCoin and their concept, this whole event might be confusing for you. So let's establish some things. Basically, as you guys know about the recent developments of these AI models, their presence is ever increasing on the web. Going forward, it will become even harder to identify who is human and who is a bot. So this makes all online polls, online presence and any online activity questionable, whether you are interacting with a human or a bot. In the future, you can't be sure if the person you are on a call with having a Zoom meeting or chatting is actually the same person or even a person at all instead of a bot. So it becomes very important to have a POH, proof of human, that verifies the humanness of an individual online. This way you can be assured that the person you are talking to is actually a human and also the same person you intended to talk to at the first place. So this is where the world platform comes in with its world ID, world coin, the orb and the world app. So with that established, let's dive into the video. First, let's start with the verification of being human. Let's see what orb is. So here it is. Here's the new orb. So besides being just incredibly beautiful, it was designed from the ground up with scale in mind. The entire software stack was completely rewritten for all orbs to enable verifications three times faster than before. The new orb was designed with 30% fewer parts and it enables us to assemble them at twice the speed. Initially, we're tripling the production capacity of the orb with plans to increase that even further with new assembly partners and locations around the world. We're making progress towards the ultimate goal of decentralized orb manufacturing. The latest orb is built with uh, the NVIDIA Jetson architecture, which has five times the AI performance over the previous generation. It's capable of 100 trillion operations per second. So this enables the new orb to execute sophisticated AI models that prove humanness and operate entirely on device and even faster than before. The new orb was built with more transparency and the ability to audit the code that's running on it. It has a fully removable SD card that contains all the operating instructions. So anyone can compare those instructions on the SD card versus our published source code. But to provide access to every human, we need more orbs, lots more orbs, probably on the order of a thousand times more orbs than we have today. Not only more orbs, but more orbs in more places. And I wanna talk about a few ways we're gonna achieve that today. I'm excited to share the flagship locations with you today also. These are premium verification experiences. We have staff there available to answer any questions people have. We've opened our first two flagship locations in Buenos Aires and Mexico City just a couple weeks ago. This is our Mexico City location that opened just a few weeks back. Next, we're expanding access to orbs through self-serve verifications. Think of these as orbs inside existing retail locations. So your neighborhood convenience store or local coffee shop like you see behind me. These enable people to both discover the project through seeing an orb in a retail environment or specifically going to that retail store with the intent to verify with an orb. These partnerships are key to scaling the orb locations and getting more distributed in a region. And if you don't wanna go find an orb, that's okay. So starting today, we're announcing a new feature called Orb On Demand. This will enable anyone with the touch of a button to request an orb come to them. And lastly, I wanna talk about a new type of operator we're starting today called community operators. So anyone can rent or buy the new orb to verify anyone in their community. We'll have a website up, you can place your pre-order and starting in the spring of 2025, it'll be delivered to you. In fact, I want all of you guys here today to be our first community operators. Everyone here will get an orb. So as we saw, this is what ORB means and what it does when it comes to verification and establishing proof of humanness. So these are physical places where you can go and, you know, get yourself verified. Now, as you heard him say as well about the World ID, so let's delve into that. Today, we will release the next version of World ID, World ID 3.0. And I will give it over to Adrian to talk about what that includes. I appreciate that you acknowledge there's some details that we need to work through. Uh, Alex is prone to saying it's a simple plan. Uh, we'll just make an anonymous layer for the internet, and it'll work. Uh, it's not quite that simple. We also throw around the word protocol quite a lot. 
Uh, and within the organization, the reason that we do that is because it's a commitment. How do we use existing technologies that don't quite scale, that don't quite operate at the level that we want them to work, and build something that becomes part of the protocol? And they started experimenting with something called secure multi-party compute. Earlier this year, we talked about the fact that we were beginning to see the path towards using secure multi-party compute to build something that would allow data to be decentralized across several different parties. So there wouldn't be one single entity or even two entities or any individual entity that could see that data. It wouldn't be held by the WorldCoin Foundation. It wouldn't be held by any one company. The key attribute that it provides is the ability to take a piece of data, know whether it is unique, but know nothing else about that piece of data on an individual basis. Multi-party is a really important part of this because the data is broken into pieces that can't be brought back together and shared with different parties and then through a lot of math that Remco will talk about a little bit later today, gives us that key attribute of it being anonymous. By November of this year, we expect that all of the data that is behind World ID will be held by those parties broken into pieces in such a way that no one of them is able to tell anything about that data other than answering the question, is this unique, the core to our uniqueness service? There are other challenges as well. That driver's license, how many of you have tried to buy beer with your driver's license recently? I know you don't all look as young as I look. Did the uh, person that was selling you the beer say, <laughs> 155 pounds, <laughs> maybe you don't need this beer. <laughs> Did they say, oh, I know somebody that lives on your block? Because you've got your address on your driver's license. Currently, the way that we use credentials on the internet is we disclose all of the information that those credentials use in order to answer one simple question. Are you over 18 and should you have access to this content? Or if you're trying to participate in some process provided by your government, are you a citizen of your government? You don't need to answer anything more than that. In fact, there are reasons why anonymity is critical for those kinds of interactions and so important. So today, we're beginning a beta of World ID credentials. And there's two characteristics that I think are critically important here that I want to point out. This is only possible because of the scale and anonymity that AMPC provides. So we think we're unique in the ability to make this possible, but of course it's going into the protocol, so anybody can take advantage of it, anybody can use it, and we would encourage anybody and everybody to do that. The second attribute, because we are so committed to privacy, that passport information is only ever going to be on your phone. One of the things that I've heard about four or five times over the last year is an instance of a member of a company working in the finance department receiving an urgent call or an urgent text. It says, get on Zoom. This is your CEO or this is your CFO. We need to have a conversation. <clears throat> okay, unexpected, but doesn't seem scammy because I'm gonna get on a Zoom with them and I'm gonna interact with them and I'm gonna learn what it is that's being asked for. And that member of, this, of the finance department then having an interaction where they're told we need to transfer money and it's, a, it's their CEO. They're talking to their CEO. It's their CFO, they're talking to them. It's their voice, it's their face, it's a real interaction. Now, it probably hasn't happened to any of you. If it has, I wanna know more details about it, but it's something that we're concerned about. It's certainly something that we're beginning to think about and it has started to happen in the real world. And so, as we were looking at this challenge of deep fakes, we began thinking, is this something that we can help solve? And it turns out we can. We can connect those two things together combined with a challenge being issued by the person who wants to make sure that the person they're interacting with in a given transaction is actually the same face as what it is that they're seeing online or what it is that's been presented to them in the past. And so we call that World ID deep face. But in addition to that, we wanna make it available so people can begin playing with it and understanding how it works right now. So we're announcing a beta uh, and the beta is an integration with existing applications, right? You and the uh, devices that you're using right now will be able to work with this beta. We'll be able to confirm that the person you're interacting with is the one that you think you're interacting with in an online conversation. And it will work with all of the applications that currently use uh, video. So it's not dedicated to any one of them. Very excited to make that announcement. So now you saw the world ID and its applications. It gives you a proof of identity when you are in a video call or gives anonymized identity and just the required information to whichever services you are talking to, online or offline. So finally, they release the application that brings the benefits of all of this together, which is the world app. We've been blown away by the response to world app since we launched it last year. And today we're going to take it to the next level with world app 3.0. World app 3.0, has been redesigned from the ground up with one goal in mind, to make the WorldCoin network even more useful for your day-to-day -day life. It starts with WorldID, your internet human identity. You can see whether you're verified, and if you're not, 
you can use the app to find an org near you to be able to get verified. Now, of course, beyond org verifications, World App now also supports the new World ID credentials, which means that you can now add things like your passport or your driver's license to your World ID to be able to prove things about yourself in the internet without compromising your anonymity. World App will, of course, later this fall, allow you to prove not only that you're a real and unique person, but that you are who you say you are, powered by World ID DeepFace. Something else we wanted to do with this version of World App was to make it easier to interact with other people in the network. And so we're adding a tab where you can look up anyone by their username, or if you want to, connect your phone contacts so it's even easier to find your friends and do things like send them a transfer. So today, I'm very excited to share with you that we're going to introduce mini apps to World App. Mini apps are third-party applications that you can explore and use right from inside of the app, and they can integrate deeply with your World ID, with your wallet, and with your contacts to provide you a new type of products and services that were not possible before. So let's look at what they look like. The first one is a Pulse app. It's super simple. It allows you to create a poll, share it on your social media, and for the first time ever, know that the results are actually real and they aren't being skewed by bots that are trying to go one way or another. Now, it doesn't all have to be serious. It turns out that games are also way better when they're built on top of a human network. It's just much more fun to play against real humans rather than bots that are cheating. My personal favorite is Flappy Orb, and you should check it out. And it is, of course, just as hard uh, as the classic game that this is inspired by. Now, just as mini apps can integrate deeply with World ID to be able to provide unique services, they can also integrate deeply with your contacts and your wallet. So an example of that is WorldChat. WorldChat is a messaging application. It's encrypted. It's built on top of the world network. That means you can text anyone by their username or via your contacts. And you can, of course, do things like attach a picture or a voice memo on the spot. But because it's connected to your wallet, you can also just attach money right then and there. You can send money right on the spot across the world without any fees, without any pain. So that's World App 3.0. It's a super app for humans built on your identity, finance, and community. It's going to be available today, and we can't wait for all of you to try it. Thank you. OK, I think we covered everything related to the world coin. Oops, I'm sorry. It's world now. So world. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.